Good morning, Ebenezer family and friends. It is so good to uh, be back with you on this, the day that the Lord has made. Uh, if you're just blessed to know Jesus, can you just give him a hand clap and uh, put some emoticons and celebration uh, in that chat as you're able to just lift him up. Uh, thank you so much for just uh, praying for Ebenezer. Uh, we are uh, growing in so many ways, most importantly, spiritually, that we're growing in the Lord. Uh, we've been in that series, uh, Back to the Basics, that we're going to jump back in today. And um, uh, today we're going to deal with choices. You know, there's some good choices and there's some bad choices. When you get to a, a signal light and you see a, a yellow, what do you do? Uh, some of you like, uh, uh, that means speed up, you know, others are like, okay, I need to slow down. But what happens when God tells you certain things Do you just kind of speed through and uh, hope that uh, there are no repercussions from that. So we're going to deal with that today. So I want you to prepare your hearts. Uh, thank you as always for being living epistles. People are looking at us. We are an example in this world. I tell you with the earthquakes that are going on, rumors of wars, we cannot help uh, but to realize it is getting closer to the return of Christ. And you know what? God is faithful. He's using us to spread uh, the good news in this world. So I, I want you to continue to walk as living epistles. Don't forget about everything that's going on during the week at ebcnc.com. I've got a lot of, of virtual uh, things there to edify you. Monday at seven o'clock, got Monday manna of encouragement. Tuesday, our noonday Bible study at ebcnc.com, where we're going through the book of Genesis. And that's been a a great study together. And then on Wednesdays at seven o'clock, we're going through the book of Hebrews. Uh, and then uh, our in-person uh, Bible study is on Thursdays from six to seven, where we're going through the book of First Corinthians. It's been really challenging as we've been looking at those scriptures, how God used Paul the apostle and how it is comparative to where we are today. Uh, finally, I just want to uh, thank you so much for all your prayers for our 845 service and our uh, 1045 in-person service. And of course, our 10 o'clock online. Uh, I want to thank you also for uh, being cheerful givers that you've been purposing in your heart. You've been giving not grudgingly or of necessity. So thank you for that, whether you're sending it into our secure mailbox or using the app, which is a phenomenal, or you're in our in-person service and you're uh, giving in that manner. We say thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, I'm, I'm ready. I am ready uh, to get into the word for today, but I want our hearts to be prepared so that we can receive what God has for us. We'll see you soon. Good morning. Today I'm reading Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 26. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and inveighing each other. Thank you. All of my help come from the Lord.
show him. Come from the Lord. to know that all of our help comes from the Lord. I'll tell you, Minister Brown uh, just was recently in the hospital, and so he was really singing that from his heart, uh, knowing that God is still a miracle maker. Any witnesses out there, just lift up those hands. I uh, put some emoticons in that chat to celebrate all of our help comes from the Lord. Well, as we get back to the basics, we have been going through uh, different topics that have been given to me that people desire for me to uh, teach on. And today, uh, we're going to get into another one um, that is really going to bless you. But before we get there, uh, let's go to our memory scripture. Remember, we've been reading uh, this scripture, particular one in James uh, chapter 1, 26 and 27. And we've been reading it aloud, one with another, uh, so it can get into our minds and seep into our hearts. So if you don't mind, let's focus in on James 1, 26 and let's read it together aloud. If anyone amongst you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Wow. I'll tell you, if we really grasp that, as we're getting back to the basics, man, our lives will change, definitely. Well, today's subtopic uh, that we're kind of dealing with under that back to the basics is guilt and shame. Yes, guilt and shame. I, I believe this plagues a lot of people, and they're able to put on a front, a mask. Uh, the, the Greek word for that is a hypocrite. Uh, that is putting a face and uh, we live, we can live our lives in hypocrisy. But today we're going to try to peel this back as we jump to the scriptures in John, St. John chapter 4 and around that 16th verse. Uh, St. John chapter 4 and 16. Very popular section as we uh, meet this woman at the well. Uh, we know her background. Uh, she is a fornicator, an adulteress, uh, and uh, she is living a life of guilt and shame. And so we're going to peel that back to look at our lives and how we can come clean uh, when we come to the Lord. Before we go any further, uh, let's go in a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much for this day. Um, you are a wonderful God. Uh, thank you for your love that you've shown us over and over again. Uh, now, Father, I pray for those who are uh, looking and listening in right now. Uh, maybe there's someone out there that does not know you. I pray that today be their day, that they will confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that, Father, you have raised him from the dead and you said they would be saved. Let them know it's by grace through faith and not of themselves. It is a gift from you. Oh, that they reach out and receive that gift from you today. Uh, now, Lord, I thank you for your presence in this place. Holy Spirit, would you teach us? Would you guide us? Would you lead us into all truth? Would you make this word so plain? 
so easy to be understood that even a small child can be transformed to be like you. We give you praise, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. In the chat, can you just say amen? Wherever you're standing, sitting, say amen. Uh, let's look at this uh, portion of scripture, John 4, uh, starting at that 16th verse. Jesus said to her, go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have well said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands and the one whom you now have is not your husband in that you spoke truly. Uh, I want to speak from a, a title today, uh, Your Will Versus God's Will. Yes, Your Will Versus God's Will. Uh, about six years ago, um, Prophetess Juanita Bynum, uh, she preached a, a sermon. Uh, it was entitled, No More Sheets. Yes, No More Sheets. Uh, in that sermon, she was very transparent. She was open about uh, the promiscuity that had occurred in her life as a single and all she, she dealt with, her marriage and uh, being divorced. And in essence, all the people that she had been with, uh, she was making a declaration that no more sheets, that she wanted to live her life in a life of purity. She also confessed that uh, she was in the church. Uh, she grew up, I believe, in the Church of God of Christ. And uh, there she would go to church. And some of those people that she had slept with uh, were uh, church people that she would have to see when, when in the congregation. And they knew her secrets. And therefore, she carried that guilt and shame. I believe the day as we go to this message, some of you are struggling with some decisions in your life. And just because we're going to talk about it, you are justifying it does not make it right. Uh, many of you are deciding about your will, that you want your will to be done. But the day we're going to say, hey, there is God's will and God's will is everything. Time frame of this particular scripture around 30 AD, early in Jesus' ministry, uh, the previous chapter, uh, we, we get a, a picture of Nicodemus coming to Jesus, that witness of John the Baptist also. And now we transition to a, uh, a setup that God himself has to have an encounter uh, with this woman at the well. Let's jump into it, John 4 and 5. So he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, uh, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. Uh, this is our first point. And for our note takers, uh, get ready because we're going to go through. We're going to kind of dissect this. Uh, Jesus will find you. Yes, Jesus will find you. Uh, no matter, no matter your struggles in your life, no matter how much you're trying to hide from him, he's going to find you. He has an appointment. And I believe today, if you're listening and you're struggling uh, in your life, he, he has found you and he's going to speak to you. As we look at the context of the scripture, uh, this well that he's at is about a, a hundred feet deep. And um, this is a, you know, a foundation place. This is where everybody would know would come to get these waters. Uh, it was around noon Jewish time, but Roman time was around 6 p.m. And, and we find out that when he gets there, he's tired. Look at this, John 4, 6. Now Jacob's will was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. E even though, listen to me, Jesus was tired. He, he was tired. He had to get to this well. He had to have an encounter with this lady. Uh, his tiredness did not inhibit him uh, from ministering to someone that was in the midst of guilt and shame. And she was tired in her life. She was broken down. She was worn out living a life that she had been living. But I am so glad, anybody glad for a Savior that will show up in the nick of time. Ezekiel 34, 11 says, For thus says the Lord God, Indeed I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out. If we were honest with ourselves, none of us saved ourselves. Uh, many of us were going through our lives, making our will, our choices, when, when God's will popped up and, and the Lord tracked us down, found us in our sin, and he convicted our hearts. And aren't you glad for being able to cry out to the Lord? And he shows up and shows out. Uh, look at uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 with me. Uh, Jesus said this in his ministry. Ministry. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Can you put in the chat rest? 
I, I, I've, I've preached on this, that word rest. It, it just brings comfort to me. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Uh, your will versus God's will. When, we, when you really embrace God's will, that's when you get rest. Jesus shows up for this encounter with this lady at the well so that she can have rest. Look at John 4, 7. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Here's the point. What can you give Jesus? Yes. What can you give Jesus? Uh, a Christ is not hindered uh, even by racial barriers, socioeconomic, uh, whatever you may go through, he's not hindered. He can minister to you right where you are. Uh, this particular woman, she was a Samaritan, and uh, it, she was known as a half-breed. Or uh, when the Palestinians had had come in, uh, they were, it because a uh, problematic, and they actually married with the Jewish area, and they were called half-breeds. This was a Samaritan, so she has this stigma. She's not only has the stigma of 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 being a, a person of ill repute because she has been sleeping around and adultery slash fornication has been in her life. But but now she has this racial slur that's been placed on her. But, but notice John 4, 7, a woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. Jesus will deal with you where you are. I want you to get that in mind. He's going to find you where you are. Uh, you, you, you made it uh, to this broadcast today, this internet connection today. I, I want to encourage you, go ahead and give Jesus a drink. Uh, give Jesus a try. Reach out to him. Uh, you, you, you woke up in spite of the, the shame and guilt that you're going through. So, so today, would you open up your heart and just give uh, Jesus a drink? Technically, uh, she, was, she was on her way. Listen to me. She was on her way to get water to take back to her man. Oh, there ought to be some folks. You walking with me? She was. She was going to the well, this hundred feet deep well. She was going to get water for, for the man that she was with now so that he could drink. But when she came to the well, uh, there was another man, the capitalized man, Jesus the Christ, the anointed one. And Jesus said, give me a drink. Uh, that, that thought pattern is mind boggling me simply because now Jesus interposes his will into the situation and she has to make a choice. Look at John 4, 9. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you being a Jew ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman, for Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Uh, here's the point. Hurt from the past hurt from the past. We, we, we've introduced that, that thought pattern because of her, uh, the slur that's been put on her life. She's known as a half breed. She says, you know what? I, I, I would give you a drink, but why are you talking to me anyway? Uh, uh, she, she noticed quickly, but they, they were from different uh, sides of, of the street. You know, they, uh, she, she was, she was from the hood and, and she looked at Jesus coming from the upper crust part here. Uh, they, 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 they come to each other and they make a connection, a contact. And I, I am so glad that's what Christ does. When you give yourself to him, when you start to recognize his will, there's a connection that's made. Uh, and God put this on my heart. Listen to this. Don't allow your past hurts to keep you from your future blessings. There ought to be some praise here. Can I, can I read that? Can I say that again to you? Don't allow your past hurts to keep you from your future blessings. Uh, some of you are living in guilt and shame, but because of your past hurts, because of all of that, God wants to deliver deliver you, but you're allowing yourself to fall back to areas that you don't need to be at. Uh, we, we, we need to make sure that when Jesus shows up, we give our heart to him. When we sense him speaking to us, that we don't walk away. John 4, 10, Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The point is living water, living water. How often do we miss Jesus right in front of us? 
Yes, the, the movement. We, we can come to the church, the fellowship. We can be on our internet, online, our connection and listening in. And, and we're like, man, this sounds good. But we miss the connection. We miss the living water that God wants to speak directly to us. In Hebrews uh, chapter 13, around that second verse, it says, Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by so doing, some have unwittingly entertained angels. I, I believe God wants to speak to us all the time. I believe when we're going to our job, God wants, has a word word for us. And, and when we're driving our car, God has a word for us, but we have to be open to receive his will in our lives. Look at John 4, 10, about midway. It said, if you knew, Jesus said, I, I'm in front of you, but you don't know who you're dealing with. How often in our lives has Christ been so close? His power, his anointing to deliver has been there to take us out of our guilt and shame, but we miss the movement of the spirit. Uh, some of you are battling over and over again. Uh, you've chosen your will. How is that turning out for you instead of God's will? But Jesus is here for you today. He wants to speak to you. He wants you to desire the living water, his living water that he can only give. Uh, somebody uh, might say, you know what? I I'm good. I'm good with my will. You keep you keep the living water. Uh, 1 John 1 8 says, if we say that we we have no sin. We deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Can you put in the chat truth? Can you say truth? God wants to get at the truth. When we've been walking in our will, we've been lying to ourselves and God is saying, my will is the only will. First John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Your will versus God's will. Uh, look at John 4, 11. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. Uh, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Here's the point. Fill my cup, Lord. Yes, fill my cup, Lord. Uh, St. Augustine, uh, the, uh, uh, one of the uh, persons that really uh, was converted in an amazing way within his life, he called him saint, but he wasn't always a saint. He said this, he says, oh Lord, you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless till they rest in you. Oh, man, that's a, that's a powerful quote there. Uh, many are living in guilt and shame, and, and they're, they're trying to figure out, why do I feel this way? Why why do I continue to carry this guilt and shame? It's because you're, you're making choices for your will. You haven't decided to uh, log on to what God is up to in his will, through his word, what he's laid out. Uh, maybe the, this hymn of faith uh, that was written by Richard Blanchard Singer, uh, Singer was, was, was one of the testimonies of, of this woman at the well. It says, like the woman at the well, I was seeking for things that could not satisfy. And then I heard my Savior speaking, draw from my well that never shall run dry. There are millions in this world who are craving the pleasures earthly things afford, but none can match this woman wondrous treasure that I find in Jesus Christ, my Lord. So my brother, if things this world gave you leave hungers that won't pass away, some of you know about that, my blessed Lord will come and save you if you kneel to him and humbly pray. I, I love that chorus. Feel my cup, Lord. Uh, feel, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul, bread of heaven. Uh, feed me till I won't no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole. Someone told me uh, this story. I haven't verified it. I haven't heard it myself, but I, I heard it by way of someone that Will Smith uh, gave a testimony of his life. And, you know, uh, he was involved with that smack that was heard all around the world. Uh, in an interview, uh, he said, you know what? I had reached the top. He said, uh, any any car that I wanted to drive, I could drive it. And uh, I could go any place. I could stay any place. He said, I could have any house that I, I wanted to be. I, I had reached the pinnacle. He said, I had been with the women I wanted to be. I had done all the 
that I wanted to do. He said, but when I got to the top, there was still something missing. I, I, I thought getting to the top, I thought uh, having all of this thing uh, would, would, would feel that emptiness that was in my heart. But he said, at the top, it felt even worse. Saints of God, I'm telling you, it, it, it will not change. Uh, we will carry this guilt and shame around with us until we decide to lean wholeheartedly into God's will. Look at John 4, 15. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. Uh, here's the point, spiritual breakthrough. Yes, spiritual breakthrough. Now, now I, I do want to uh, set the setting because there's tension in here. Uh, the, the issue is, why was she there in the first place? Why wasn't everybody else there? Because the guilt and shame, because of her fornication, her adulterous lifestyle, uh, she had been ostracized. And so she didn't hang out with all the other ladies. The, the context is she had to come in a time where nobody else was there because she didn't want to be put down. She didn't want to be talked about uh, because she was different from the level of morality that was set up in her community. The the sad thing about it, if Jesus would show up in our day and time, I think there would have been a whole bunch of crowd there because she would have had a lot of people to hang out with because so many people are justifying what they're doing. They're justifying adulterous relationships, justifying cohabitation, justifying fornication. They're justifying all of these things. But just because you have a, a bigger group that's with you does not make it right. It's about what God has said, and we have to stand on that. But notice as she gives gets here at this point, she's like, I, I, I physically, she says, you know, this living water, give me some of it so I don't have to come back here. I, I, I've been talked about. I've been looked down on. My man is always thirsty. And so if I can get this water, I don't have to make this, this long trek anymore. I can stay where I'm staying, doing what I'm doing. So many in this like response are coming to church, uh, just listening to a, a pastor, but you got to have a spiritual breakthrough. Uh, Paul explained this in 2 Corinthians 4, 18, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary. Can you put that in the chat? Temporary, wherever you stand and say it, it's temporary, uh, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Can you go ahead and type that real quick again? Eternal, eternal. Can you say it? Eternal. So we're versing temporary and eternal. Our will is temporary. God's will is eternal. So what do we choose? God's will. Uh, faith uh, will take us to our, our spiritual breakthrough. Jesus is, is gently leading this, this woman uh, that has issues and struggles in her life, this guilt and shame. Guilt, uh, she, he's leading her past this guilt and shame to, to have faith in him. Uh, her, her faith in the world has failed her. Her faith in her man has failed her. Her men has failed her. But the, but the, the, the woman, though she caught just physically of what was going on, uh, Jesus wants to take her to a spiritual breakthrough breakthrough. Look at 415, sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. Je Jesus talks about faith and the growing of it in Matthew 17, 20. So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you, if you have faith, as a side of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move and nothing will be impossible. Isn't that good? God wants us to have just a, a bit of faith. Hebrews 11, 1 talks about it even further, where Jesus is taking this lady and says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtain a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen are were not made of things which are visible. Your will versus God's will. I, I'm telling you, she's getting there. Look at John 4, 16. Jesus said to her, go, call your husband and come here. Uh, here's the point. Clean up your closet. Yes, clean up your closet. This, this, this is where it comes to. Guilt and shame we can carry it, but we got to put a label on it. We, we got to realize where we're at. We've got to realize that our choices have gotten us in this situation. 
uh, in, in order to take this, this woman to the spiritual breakthrough, to recognizing where she's at, uh, Jesus has to, 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 to go to a closet. And a lot of us, we, we got closets in our homes that we, we keep the door shut and, and we don't want to show anybody. If they come to our house, we don't, we don't show our closets. We, we've thrown all the stuff. And I, I remember uh, when I was uh, at home and my dad would tell me to clean up uh, my room or clean up my closet, I would just move the stuff around and put it up under the bed and hopefully wouldn't look up under the bed. And some of us are like that, but we got junk that's in our closet. Uh, this shame and guilt needs to come out and, and the Lord wants to clean it up. He's the only one that truly can clean up the closet. We've got to allow him to come in. Uh, guilt, guilt and shame have been locked in there over and over again. And you think that because you keep it locked in the closet that nobody knows, but it's showing in your life. It's showing in your struggles. It's showing even in your health because you won't give it to the Lord. You're walking in your will and not God's will. Uh, you, you, you come hoping uh, uh, Sunday after Sunday, or if you come to Bible, study that your sin is going to be justified. Some have turned away from God altogether and they're walking like the world, hoping that it'd be justified. But there's an emptiness on the inside. There's a restlessness on the inside. And you're saying there has to be a better day, uh, a better day in a better way within your life. You're, you're saying there has to be some kind of breakthrough that's occurring. Uh, you're, you're, you're hoping, you're hoping that your will is going to be done. But I want you to know the only will that matters is God's will. Uh, theologian Farstead, he brings this out. Listen to this. All men are lost, but not all are willing to admit it. In seeking to win people for Christ, we must never avoid the sin question. They must be brought face to face with the fact that they are dead in trespasses and sin need a savior and cannot save themselves. That Jesus is the savior that they need and he will save them if they repent of their sin and trust him. Your will versus God's will. I love Chris Jamie. He writes in his book, Philosophy. Uh, this, is, this is powerful. He said, the reality of loving God is loving him like he's a superhero. Anybody know him as a superhero who actually saved you from from stuff rather than a Santa Claus who merely gave you some stuff. You, 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 you got to come clean and, and that closet has to be cleaned up when you come to the Lord and know that you need a savior. And let me tell you, his name is Jesus. Your closet must be completely clean in order to escape this guilt and shame. And the only one, I said it earlier, I want to say it again, the only one that can do that is Christ. Look at John 4, 17. The woman answered, and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have well said, I have no husband uh, for you have had five. Can you put it in the chat? Five, five, five. Wherever you're standing, sit, just lift up your hand and say five, five. Uh, you had five husbands and the one whom you now have is not your husband in that you spoke truly. Uh, here's the point. The true will make you free. Yes, the truth will make you free. Now, now the tension in the text, uh, the, the, the Greek is, is complex here, and, and we're not sure. All we know is that she's been with at least five men, and, 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 and it comes out. We, we, we don't know where they are, but we know the one that she's with right now ain't really her husband. So, so however this laid down, there's been some adultery, fornication, something's going on. It is clear within the text here that she is living in sin. I believe we're in a day, I talked about it earlier, where people... People are justifying living in sin. Uh, just because you got friends that are doing it, just because people are not talking about it, does not mean that God's will is still not God's will. And we're, we're afraid sometimes to even talk about these things, but understand Jesus brings it out. Look at John 8, 32, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. I'm so glad about it. Once we realize where we are, then the change, then we can be delivered from our guilt in shame. At first, the woman tried to withhold truth about her life. She, she said, I have no husband. She, 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 she was hoping that it could be glossed over. She, she really hadn't understood and grasped who she was talking to. And you know how we do sometimes. Uh, people begin to ask us about our lives and, and we, 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 we don't want to tell them uh, what's really going on. We'll, we'll, we'll say something about, you know what, I live at this address. And then they ask about somebody else's address. We'll, we'll give another address when, when they ain't lived there in a long time. They've been staying together for a long time. We, we, we just don't talk about it. We say, this is our 
our my friend. We we don't want to get into that that fact that we're living in sin. We've made bad choices and decisions. There's guilt and shame. She says, "I have no husband." In a street strictly a legal sense, her statement was true. Yeah, strictly legal, but but spiritually there was struggle that was going on. She was trying to to, to hide the fact that she was living with a man. She was trying to hide the fact that she was struggling with guilt and shame. Uh, Jesus taught in Luke 8, 17, for nothing is secret that will not be revealed, nor anything hidden that will not be known and come to light. Let, let me say something to you. Please, please, whatever is done in the dark is going to come to the light. It, it, it don't matter. It don't matter. It don't matter. It don't matter if you if you if you don't put it out there. Somebody already knows. Somebody's always. I, I've lived long enough to find out there's somebody always listening and somebody's always looking and there's somebody always talking. Uh, the Lord clearly brings to light. She is a person that's in a sinful lifestyle. This this adulteress that's going on. John four eighteen. Look at this. And the one whom you now have is not your husband. Been, what sins have you been trying to hide? What, what, what guilt and shame are you carrying uh, around? What, what, what things are you justifying over and over again? Uh, let, let's, let, let's face the truth about our struggles. Let's, let's face the truth about our sin. Uh, let's decide not our will, but God's will be done. Uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus knows everything that's going on. Luke 12, 2, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed nor hidden that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have spoken in the dark will be heard in the light and what you have spoken in the ear and inner rooms will be proclaimed on the housetop. It's going to come out. So let's take it to the Lord. Look at John 4, 19, your will versus God's will. Um, the woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshiped on this mountain and, 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 and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Here's the point. Jesus is our everything. Yes, Jesus is our everything. When, when, when her secret life has been revealed, it's, it's been the closet door has been opened. The woman realized that this was not an ordinary man. She was used to manipulating men and, and men manipulating her because she had gone through so many. And so she thought that she could just kind of uh, push her way through this conversation. Maybe uh, she was thinking that, that, that Jesus could have been a great suitor for her, whatever. But she didn't understand this was Christ. This was anointed one. So now she pulls back. And you know how religious we get sometimes. She said, I I perceive that you're pro I, I perceive you're a church man. You 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 go to the tabernacle. So I, I need to step back. I, I thought maybe you were making some advances to me, but 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 now you you know too much about my life. Uh, she was she was still not recognizing him as God. And and so many times we go, you know what, there is a validity with, with what you're preaching, Pastor, but we haven't recognized it is the divine word of God. It is God's will that matters. The, the furthest she can go in her mind is that he's this this man that has a divine unction of what's going on. How, how do you see Jesus? Uh, you must know him as, as, as the man that can help you through your guilt and shame, the, the one that can deliver you. You, you got to know him that, that he is God manifested in the flesh, uh, the, the one that his will is the only will that matters. We, we must have a relationship. We must know that we know that we know that he is the Christ. Do you, do you know there's power in the name of Jesus, the character and what he represents? And so this begins her personal grasp of who Jesus is as she recognizes it at least one level that he is the prophet. The woman now desires to be taught by the prophet. She wants to know where 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 should I worship? What what mountain should I go to? Uh, your will versus God's will. Look at John four twenty one. Jesus said to her, "Woman." Believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship that you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit. Can you put spirit, capitalize that please, in the chat, wherever you're standing, sitting, say spirit, spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Here's the point. True worshipers. Yes, true worshipers. We, we often have tried to limit 
our worship to God on Sunday to to mask our guilt and shame. Um, we we, we want to get our praise on on one day a week uh, to, to, to mask what we're carrying around with this darkness that's in our heart. Uh, but on Monday, we go back to, to living in that guilt and shame. We go back to looking at that person that we're not married to. We go back to sleeping with someone uh, that we are not uh, connected to in a spiritual sense and, and have taken vows of covenant to them. We, we go back to lying and gossiping and, and backbiting, uh, living our own will. Uh, do, do we know uh, what and who we worship? Uh, do we realize that he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Uh, Jesus is making a statement that, that, that salvation was first uh, presented to Israel, uh, but because many of them had rejected it, now he was reaching out to give it. Do you realize what privilege we have to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and to say, God, I don't want my will anymore but I want your will. Look at John 4, 23, but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. God wants true worshipers. He doesn't want people that are just here for entertainment. He wants people that are connected with him, that know that he is everything, that can worship him when they're all by themselves. They don't need a praise team. They don't need a pastor to revoke them. But when they think about the goodness of Jesus, they want his will to be done in their lives. We, we must come to the point of embracing all of God's will for our lives. We must learn to pray like Jesus in Luke 22, 42, saying, Father, if it is your will, uh, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Let me get these final uh, uh, scriptures uh, for the day. John 4, 25 and 26. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Look at this 26th verse. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Final, final point. Reach out and grab Jesus. Yes, reach out and grab Jesus. That's what it's all about. As we realize our will ain't working, it, it, it's not working. Uh, we we got to go, you know what? I need to walk into God's will and, and we can come out. We can walk out of this guilt and shame. Uh, she's been convicted of her sin. Uh, she's now elevated from just seeing Jesus as a prophet uh, to, to knowing that he's the savior of the world. He's uh, uh, the, the Messiah. He He's Jeshua. He, he's the one that, that will return on a cloud where every eye will see him. Do you really know? Know who Jesus is when, when you embrace God's will for your life. You, you can pray when no one else is praying because you, you recognize God said pray without season. When you embrace God's will for your life, you can praise him without music. You, you can lift up your hands at times when it seems like you shouldn't lift them up. But aren't you glad for a God that's worthy of praise all the time? When you embrace God's will for your life, you can forgive your enemies when other people are telling you to get back at them. When you embrace God's will, you can escape the guilt and shame that's in your life. And I want you to know that God is faithful to walk you out of your situation. Well, as we, we close today, aren't you glad that Jesus went to a cross of Calvary to die for our guilt and shame so that we could be delivered there? There ought to be some folks that I'm, I'm, I'm glad about it. Well, let me just take you to Isaiah 53 and 3 and, and walk you through this. He is despised and rejected by man, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and he did not esteem him. I'm so glad that he understood what guilt and shame was all about. And those who would come to him and embrace him, he could deliver him from that issues and those struggles. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our pain. Yet we did esteem him stricken of God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The tithes on our peace was upon him. But with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. You, you can say that means me. All of us have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. On that cross of Calvary, nails in his hands, nails in his feet, he dies for us. They take that lifeless body off. They put it in a cold grave. Because of our guilt and shame, because of our struggles and sins, he stays there three days. But on that third day, he gets up with all power and glory and now has ascended to the right hand of the Father so that we could be delivered from our guilt and shame that we once and for all can say, Lord, here I am. Wash me with your hyssop. Make me white as snow. You will never 
be whole until you decide to walk into God's will. You will be restless. You will be empty. You will carry the stigma no matter how much. I've used this a lot today. You justify your sins. You will feel empty. But today, you can get it right. You can decide, no more, no more. I'm, I'm not going this way. What blessed me with a prophet is why I need to bite him when she uh, preached that sermon. Uh, no more. She, she said, I'm, I'm not doing it anymore. I, 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 I'm, I'm decided, God, you, you got to change me. I, 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 I'll fast. I, I, I'll pray. I, I, I'll fall before you. Whatever needs to take place, Lord, would you cleanse me of this? I, I don't want to fall back. I don't want to go back into that. Would, would, you, would you make me clean? Man, if you confess those sins, 1 John 1 and 9, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. But you got to stop. You got to stop. Yes, you got to stop. Can you put it in the chat? Stop, stop. Wherever you're standing, say, say stop. Yeah, you got to stop and decide, I'm going to do it God's way. My will versus God's will. My will doesn't matter. God's will is everything. If you're there today, your first step is to knowing who Jesus is. Maybe some of you, before we started preaching, knew him as a prophet. <laughs> knew him as someone that possibly the preacher talks about when you go to church. But today, you know him as the Messiah, Yeshua. You know him as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Jesus is his name. You know him because he's touching your heart. Well, would you just go all the way into God's will? If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God is raising from the dead, he said, you will be saved. It's by grace through faith and not of yourself. It is a gift from God. Would you embrace that? Reach out and grab Jesus today. Man, he is here. He is here right where you are. Maybe you're in your living room. Maybe you're on your break. Maybe you're in your car and you just pulled over to the side. He's like, Lord, Thank you for speaking to me, for finding me right in the midst of my guilt and shame. I, I need to change today. Oh, he'll come in like a mighty flood. He'll give you that living water that will never run dry. Would you pray with me? Father, we just come to you. I thank you for the souls that you're saving right now. I thank you for the ones that you're adding to the body right now. I thank you for the guilt and shame that's being lifted right now. I thank you that decisions are being made uh, to, to put away their will and decide to go all in to your will. I thank you that it's happening right now supernaturally that spiritual breakthroughs are occurring, Lord. We thank you for your word that never grows old. Thank you for the power. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. It cuts forward and backwards. Thank you for slicing into our hearts today. Oh, you are the miracle maker. You are the healer. You're the only one that can wash us and make us clean. Lord, we just give you praise, honor, and glory for your victory in the lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead Nails in my head Laugh at me Where you stand Go ahead Say it isn't me the day will come, yeah, when you will see, cause I
been so good as we have dealt with choices and the repercussion of choices i just thank the lord for jesus right what can wash away our sins nothing but the blood of jesus as we go into this communion today i really want you to allow the holy spirit to examine your heart um, that you're grateful uh, for the wonderful things that he is doing and that we uh, commemorate that we think about what happened at the cross of calvary and how he bled for us, he suffered for us, he died for us, but he got up on the third day uh, with all power for us. So Bianca, if you could just uh, pray over our bread and uh, pray over our juice as we think about Christ. Let's pray. Lord, we praise you and thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to commemorate the death and the burial of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for the sacrifice that he gave, Lord, so that we could have a real relationship with you. We ask that you would bless this bread. We ask that you would bless this juice that represents his body and his blood that we take in honor of all that he has done for us, Lord. Bless um, these articles and bless us to your service. We praise you and thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, before Bianca and I always uh, take communion, 
Uh, we, we take it at 8.45 service, <laughs> our 10 o'clock online and our 10.45. Always go, are we good? Are we good? And we do, before we go on, simply because we want to make sure that our heart is right. We want to uh, make sure that there is no unforgiveness there, that we're not holding anything. And I encourage you to do that same uh, thing to yourself. And if you have somebody around, go, are we good? Make sure that you're good so that we can take this in a worthy manner. I just want to uh, kind of just quote a, a few scriptures today. Uh, Paul, the apostle, gets a revelation of you know what, the immensity, the heaviness of communion. On uh, that 1 Corinthians 11 chapter, on that 23rd verse, he said, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take ye, this is my body which is broken for you. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and you drink the cup, you do proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. That, that, isn't that heavy? Uh, but it goes on and it says, for he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner actually uh, eats and drinks brings that guilt upon them. And we don't want to be guilty because we take for granted uh, the, the Lord Jesus and what he's done. And it goes on and says, but let a man examine himself. So let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Uh, for he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, again on the other side, will actually drinks and eats judgment upon himself. We, we don't we won't want judgment. Uh, Paul even goes on and, and gives a spiritual revelation. He said, for this reason, uh, many are weak and sick among you and some sleep. Some have even passed away because they took for granted, again, that word, the immensity of the communion. Uh, but it goes on, it says, let us judge ourselves uh, so that when we are judged by the Lord, we're, we're chastened by him that we not may not be condemned with the world. So in all of that, we want to take it to the Lord. And uh, 1 John 1 and 9 is clear. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So if you have anything in your heart now, give it to the Lord. Uh, he's the only one that can clean you up. Uh, well, let's get those communion uh, cups if you have it from the church or if you're using your uh, bread articles or some crackers, go ahead and get those and uh, get you some juice. And uh, we want to uh, go to that upper room uh, with Christ. And in that last Passover uh, before his death, uh, Jesus goes up and he has all his disciples around and um, it is a fun time. You know, you get to eat, you got the Passover lamb, you're drinking and you're just enjoying the fellowship. But this time he picks up the bread and he breaks it. And he said, this represents my body, which is going to be broken for you. As often as you eat it, let's do it in remembrance of him. Let us eat together. After they're chewing, they're like, okay, this is his body. They, had, they hadn't heard that before in that manner. I compared, he is the Messiah. He had to go to the cross of Calvary. But I believe this, this really took it to a heavy level when he picks up the goblet of wine and he said, this represents my blood uh, that's going to be shed for you. As often as you drink it, uh, let's do it in remembrance of him. Let us drink together. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I encourage you, as you go through your day, think about Christ. Yes, he died, but he is resurrected so that we can trust him. Uh, whatever he tells us to do, let's walk that path as we glorify him. He is so, so good. Well, I want you to be blessed and know that God is working in you. Until we meet again, 